The Croatian Legion, or the 269th Croatian Reinforced Infantry Regiment, was created mid-July 1941. A month before that, the so-called Independent State of Croatia, the NDH, officially joined the Tripartite Pact. But why did the Croats send a legion? and not their armed forces like other countries did. Now the process of how Croatia joined Operation Barbarossa is what you will learn in this video, keep watching. Now in order to discuss the Croatian Legion, we need to discuss the establishment of the independent state of Croatia. It was carved out of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia that was toppled by the Axis powers in April 1941. Officially it became a kingdom with the Italian royal Tomislav II on the throne, but he never resided there. The real leader, so to say, was the leader of the Croatian ultra-nationalist movement, the Ustasha, and his name was Ante Pavlic. So his movement, the Ustasha, what kind of movement was this? The Ustasha movement saw itself as an elite body of patriotic fighting men, revolutionary warriors, as one of their leading ideologues wrote, struggling for an independent Croatian state. To achieve this aim, they were prepared to employ the most uncompromising method necessary, including mass murder. The NDH would go down in history as one of the most murderous states, where Serbs, Jews, Roma and Sinti were murdered by the masses in the most sadistic ways you can imagine. Now I discussed this in depth in my video about Croatia during World War II, link can be found at the end card. In July 1941, Ustasha leader Ante Pavlic called up young men between the age of 20 32 to volunteer for the Legion. Now according to him, it was a policy that came from below, like the people, they wanted to fight for the Axis powers against the USSR. On the other hand, Pavlic, he wanted to do his part in what he perceived as the biggest threat for Europe, the Soviet Union, the Bolshevik state. And they saw that the Serbs and the Jews within the borders of the NDH were basically representatives of this totalitarian state and that needed to be eradicated. And this might sound strange since the USSR was miles away from Croatia, but still. The Ustasha leaders believed Europe was in a struggle against the Bolshevik East, progressive Europe versus the primitive East. And the Jews and the Serbs were seen as hostile elements from the East that needed to be dealt with. Within the borders of the NDH, uh, via mass murder and terror, and also outside its borders. And therefore, the Croats needed to fight against the USSR. Rory Yermans wrote the following about it. The driving factor behind the creation of the Legion was the Ustasha leadership, motivated by a number of factors including national prestige and an overly optimistic reading of the chances of German success. On the 24th of June 1941, two days after Germany attacked the Soviet Union, Siegfried Kasia sent a telegram to Joachim von Ribbentrop mentioning a letter Njaden Larkovic, the Croatian foreign minister, wanted to forward to the Führer from the Poglavnik. Among other things, the letter mentioned the desire of Slavko Kvaternik, the supreme head of the Croatian armed forces, to establish a volunteer unit which could be used in operations in the east, in this way strengthening the ancient Croat-German military brotherhood. The letter added though that some soldiers had already asked Kvaternik for permission to fight shoulder to shoulder with their German comrades. In such a way, Croatia would make its sacrifice for the new Europe. Now, over the course of the summer of 1941, Ustasha leaders gave speeches throughout the country to support the recruitment drive. In these speeches, Germany was hailed as the liberator of the Croat state. I mean, without German help, the Croatian state would never have been established. And now Croatian men had to repay the Germans by joining the Wehrmacht to fight shoulder to shoulder against the Bolsheviks. And the Russian Bolsheviks were seen as the big brother of the Serbs. And the Croatian state, the NDH, was carved out of the Yugoslav Kingdom, a state that was dominated by Serbs. In the first week, around 5,000 men joined, of which 4,000 were selected. Their reasons were diverse, patriotic, ideological, political and religious. 
Also, Bosnian Muslims joined the Legion. Some men joined because they were already disappointed by the realities of the new Croatian state that was full of violence and chaos. They wanted to escape. Although officially it was part of the regular Croatian army, the Doma Brans, and recruits wore Croatian national insignias on their arms and helmets. Essentially, the Legion constituted a unit of foreign volunteers within the Wehrmacht. And this is interesting, since all of Germany's allies that fought on the Eastern Front, I'm talking about Italy, Slovakia, Romania, Hungary, even co-belligerent Finland, they wore their own uniforms. So Romanians fought in Romanian uniforms, Hungary in Hungarians in Hungarian uniforms. But Croatians, they fought in German uniforms. Why was this? Okay, let's first look at the land army, part of the armed forces of the independent state of Croatia, known as the Croatian Home Guard in Croatia, Hervatsko Domovransko. It was set up after the NDH was proclaimed. The army, called Kopnena Vojska, and from 1933 officially known as Domobranstvo, became an army of 55,000 men and mostly wore old Yugoslav army uniforms. There was a severe lack of weaponry as the Yugoslav weaponry was captured by the Italians and Germans after the Axis invasion of Yugoslavia. They captured it as war booty. The Germans and Italians were unwilling to supply arms because of the uprising that occurred within Axis controlled Yugoslavia in July 1941 the economic interests of the Axis powers came in danger and thus they were willing to supply the Croatian army. It was mostly done by the Germans. So this brings us back to our first question. So why didn't the Croats send their home army to fight in the east? I mean the name of the land army is basically home guard so it means they have to stay in the home country but it's not all that. Some Croatian generals were not happy at all that Croatian men could fight in the east. See, the Germans were not in full force in Axis occupied Yugoslavia as they committed most of their troops on the Eastern Front. And Croatia and also the other parts of this member Yugoslavia became a hotbed of resistance activities. According to historian Stefan Pavlovic, the first resistance against the NDH was not ideologically motivated. It just came down to survival as local priests, teachers and merchants armed themselves to fight against the Eustasha death squads that roamed the country and killed many people they deemed undesirable. Think of Serbs, Jews and Roma and Sinti. Soon the resistance also took on an ethnic bias. Now later organized resistance sprung up and the resistance in Yugoslavia during World War II is a very big and complicated topic but where it all came down to was that you had two groups of resistance. There were the communist oriented partisans that were led by Josip Broz Tito and the Serbian nationalists that were led by Draza Mihailovic. These were known as the Chetniks. And both started their operations in neighboring Serbia, but it soon spilled over to the NDH. The Croats played no role at all in plans for Barbarossa. Their job would be to pacify the Yugoslavian hinterland of the future Eastern Front, especially in the light of the resistance movement which developed once Barbarossa began but also given the partisan war waged by Tito's communist forces. Croatian officer Ivan Babic believed that the information of the legion was motivated by the wish to reduce Italian influence over the region while winning favors for Croatia from Germany. Speaking of Italy, also Italy recruited Croatian for their own legion, the Italian Croatian Legion, known as the Light Motorized Battalion, LMB. Although Pavlic wasn't happy about it, he did comply and provided men once the Italians asked for it, which happened in July 1941. It consisted of Croatian men that were planned for the 269th, but were allocated to this formation that consisted of 1,215 men in total. In April, they arrived at the Eastern Front to join the Italian 8th Army. By that time, the men of the 269th, the Croatian Legion, had already been on the Eastern Front for several months. They saw their first action against the Red Army in October 1941. Later they participated in battles of Falka and Kharkiv. In November a major battle across the Mies River followed. 
As the temperatures plummeted, so did morale. Many fell ill and requested to be sent home, a request that in most cases was not granted. Now, some were sent home due to illness and disciplinary reasons. Some were executed for military offenses. Meanwhile, from home, a gift campaign was organized. Gifts from Croatia were sent to the legionnaires. People hoped it would reach them before Christmas, but in reality, most of these gifts reached them by the spring. While the mood at the home front remained positive and upbeat, the mood on the Eastern Front was literally and spiritually a world away. Historian Rory Yeomans wrote the following. The evidence of this illusion on the part of the legionnaires, who had only recently and enthusiastically volunteered for service expressed a more profound truth. Soldiers and citizens, in the first five months at least, were not just separated by geography, but a gulf in understanding too. Different fronts meant fighting different wars. If you want to learn more about this Croatian legion, I have an in-depth episode on just that. You can find it right here. And if you want to learn the story about Croatia in World War II, you will want to have a full overview. Click right here. Thanks for watching and bye for now.